How about a little beef short rib action on the pit barrel cooker today? So thank you for stopping by Ballistic Barbecue. As I stated today, I am doing beef short ribs on the pit barrel cooker, and these are the ribs I'm doing. Beautiful three bone rack, USDA prime beef short ribs. It's gonna be great. First thing we're gonna do is make a very simple rub. And all I'm going to do is add equal amounts of ground black pepper and adobo seasoning. This is the adobo that I like to use. This is it just, it's going to add so much more than just, you know, black pepper and salt. Give it a good shake. Now I wanna point out, I trimmed off the silver skin off the front. Normally on beef short ribs, I'm not going to touch the back, the membrane on the back. They kind of help hold the bones on. But my butcher took the liberty of, for whatever reason, making a kind of a, removing the, a strip of membrane from each bone. And he did that while I wasn't looking. I was checking out some other cuts of meat in the counter. And next thing I looked and I could see him with a big old scimitar. I'm like, whoa, stop. Um, but I'm thinking it's not going to cause any problems. It just helps kind of hold the meat on the bone. Whenever you're cooking these short ribs, there, there's always going to be, because the meat's going to kind of tighten up and shrink, you'll always get a little kind of a pullover to the side at one of the ends, but I'm not worried too much about this. Let's go ahead and get this seasoned up really good. sides here. So off camera what you didn't see was this get knocked off the counter here onto the <laughs> onto my patio. A little mess to clean up. Still have still have enough rub to finish the job here though. There's no need to season the back. Just a bone and membrane back there. Okay now as far as the hooks are concerned I like to run two hooks on these short ribs. So I'll put one right through here, right underneath the top bone here. So bones running horizontally. The next hook, put it on the meat side. I can find the spot where it goes through here. There we go. You want the hooks to where the open ends are facing outward, if that makes any sense. Uh, like that. So they're facing outward. So I have the pit barrel lit. It's not quite ready to cook on yet. So in the meantime, I have something I want to show you. So the creators of Pit Barrel Cooker have actually developed a, another line of products. And under a separate brand name, it's End Grain. And they have put out the most gorgeous, beautiful cutting boards I think I've ever seen. It's made in Kentucky, it's made in USA, and their brand is in grain. And what this means is, here's a little split here of wood. Most cutting boards, the boards are going to be sideways like this. Okay, so the grain is going lengthways, lengthwise across the cutting board. In grain, it's this way. So it's made of cuts of wood where the grain is pointing straight up and down. So this makes a stronger very cool looking cutting board. This is walnut and maple, and it's almost as if it was custom built for me. It wasn't because it, it addresses one of the big complaints I have. And that's, it, l let me tell you, the cutting boards you see on my channel are not cheap. This channel, this juice channel, is ridiculously deep in a good way because I can't tell you how many times, you know, I've been carving turkeys or whatever and it's starting to overflow on the juice channels on my again not cheap cutting boards it has handles you know lifting handles on the side which is good and you can see there it has a little cutout, I guess you'd say for pouring the juice out you know, the, uh, makes it easier for cleanup so I'll have links down below if you want to check out the site and they're also linking it from the pit barrel cooker site anyway Looks like the charcoal's ready. Let's go ahead and get this going. First thing I'm gonna do is insert those rebar. This not only is the hanger for the meat, but it also 
is part of the damper system for the uh, airflow. So now you're going to see why I wanted to make sure those hooks were facing outward. There. There we go. And I'd be doing the same thing if this was like a large, like a prime rib roast. Now I'm burning lump charcoal in here and I'm going to add just a few small chunks of hickory. And I don't go too heavy on the wood in the pit barrel. You don't need to. It's a pretty small container here. Get a lot of smoke. Lid on and we are cooking. So if you're not familiar with the pit barrel cooker, basically there are no controls for maintaining the temperature. You don't have to adjust anything while you're cooking. Let me put it that way. There's a lower damper and then those holes that are partially obstructed now with those rebar. That's the damper system. And this thing has been basically tuned while it was being developed to cook perfectly based on the elevation you're cooking at. So I have mine adjusted right now for where I'm at. And I can tell you that this is the probably the easiest cooker that I own. Uh, once you get in there, you just walk away and it does the rest. You don't need to fiddle around. People have asked, well, what temperature are you cooking at? I don't know. I, I can honestly tell you that I have never ran a probe to see what the temperature of the cooker is in this, in this pit here. So you just have to trust it. You follow the instructions and trust it and it won't let you down. And I can promise you that. I've, I've suggested this uh, cooker to a lot of people who have approached me uh, telling me that they want to get into barbecue. They haven't barbecued before and you know find out what their budget is. This thing I think it's perfect for someone who's just getting in because I, I can pretty much guarantee there's not going to be any frustration. They're going to cook on it, they're going to have success, be happy, and continue their journey of outdoor cooking. So it's pretty cool. My experience on the beef short rib cooks on the pit barrel cooker is it's going to be somewhere between the three and four hour range. So two hours I'll be checking it and giving you guys a peek. We're at two hours now and we're going to check on the progress of this cook here. And of course, I just noticed I have this to where it's, it was bone away here. I'm going to need to make it easier on myself, Greg. So you can see it's getting some great color. Definitely does not look done yet. I'm going to use a meat probe. It's not even turned on. I'm just testing for tenderness. And yeah, it's, it's definitely getting more tender, but it's not where I want it to be yet. All right, let's go ahead and get this back on. So it's coming along, it's looking really good, smells great. I'm guessing it's going to be another one and a half to two hours before it's done though. So keep you guys posted. Like I said, so far, so good. It, it just smells amazing. All right, we're at three hours, 15 minutes. Let's give it a look. Looking good. And you can see that's, I was mentioning that pull back to the side and we've got it right there. Let's check for tenderness here. Got a lot of nice pullback on the bone ends. So I'm wearing the nitrile gloves with the little cotton insulated gloves underneath. 
which is why I was able to kind of touch all that stuff down there. Uh, it's looking really good. It's getting very, very tender. And I'm thinking another 15 more minutes. I'm just going to leave it on there, just another 15 more minutes. If I were going to be applying like a sauce to it, I'd be doing it right now. So anyway, yeah, 15 minutes will be good. See you then. All right, 15 minutes later. Before I just pull it and hope that it's ready, I'm going to make sure. This one hook, I kind of could have done a better job. Well, there we go. Wow, looks great. All right, I'm going to pull it. So I'm going to allow this to rest. We're going to slice it up, give you guys a try. 15 minutes of resting, and look at that. Just gorgeous. <laughs> Again, it smells so good. Now, I mentioned early in the video how my butcher took his knife and cut, like I said, a good quarter inch, maybe a little wider of membrane off the center of each bone, if you can imagine it going down the length of each bone. I normally leave all the membrane on with beef short ribs to help hold the meat on the bones. I stopped him. I, I, I'm guessing he was planning on pulling all the membrane off. I don't know. He seemed surprised when I stopped him. But it, I think it definitely paid a, played a role in, again, some of the, like this bone here is really loose. So lessons learned. I, I mean, keep an eye on your butcher. If, like I said, he was, he had, there was two racks in the, in the cryo vac. He was, I just thought he was pulling the one rack out. But anyway, live and learn. Let's give this a try. <laughs> uh, brisket on a stick. Oh, wow. <sighs> this is lunch. This is my lunch, my wife's lunch. And if my son is good, his lunch. Now he'll, he'll get one. See, this is the bummer right here. But this, this happens whenever you cook a beef short rib. There's, it's going to shrink. It's going to tighten up and shrink and pull off to the side. So you're always going to end up with one bone that is kind of... Wow. Uh. Just look at that. And it is juicy. Can jiggly, jiggly. Uh. Really happy. Try this out. <laughs> it's cutting itself. Just such a great smoke ring. So, dang, juicy. Oh, it's literally my lunch time right now. Mm. Perfectly cooked. I barely tended to this thing at all, which is one of the nice things. You get it rolling. You can go to the store, do whatever you need, and, and you don't have to worry about feeding it more wood, you know, making some damper adjustments. It, it just set it and forget it. You don't have to worry about power going out and pellets not being fed. Mm. Love it. Anyway, guys. Thanks for stopping by. If uh, you want to check out the cutting boards or the pit barrel cooker, all the links down below. If you're not subscribed, please take a moment and hit that little red button, ring the bell so you get notifications. And if you like the video, thumb it up. Hope you liked it. Let me see, what are we drinking today? Orange Avenue Wit. And, and I like this is one of my good refreshing beers. It's, it's a uh, wheat beer from Coronado Brewing Company, local out here, San Diego area. See you on the next video. Cheers.